Hi, this is part three, I think, um, on the tips of um, finding propag finding out what propaganda and manipulation is and stuff. Um, fair use, ed educational purposes. I'm on number 22 now. Um, be relentlessly honest with yourself about your own inner narratives and the various ways you engage in manipulation. You can't navigate your way through the narrative control matrix if you aren't clear on your own role in it. Look inside and consciously take an inventory. Understand that truth doesn't generally move in a way that is pleasing to the ego, i.e. in a way Hollywood scripts are written to appeal to any narrative that points to a Hollywood ending where the bad guy gets karate kicked into the lava and the hero gets the girl is manufactured. Um, Russiagate and QAnon are both perfect examples of an egologically pleasing narrative with the promise of a Hollywood ending, either by Trump and his cohorts being dragged off in chains or by the white hats over overcoming the deep state and throwing all the Democrats and never Trumpers in prison for paedophilia. Ain't gonna happen, folks. Number 24. Try to view the world with fresh eyes rather than with your tired, old, grown-up eyes which have taught you to see all this as normal. Hold an image in your mind of what a perfectly healthy and harmonious world would look like. The sharp contrast between this image and the world we have now allows you to see through the campaign of the propagandists. To normalise things like war, poverty, ecocide and impotent electoral systems which keeps seeing the same government behaviour regardless of the people of who people vote for. None of this is normal. Know that the truth has no political party and neither do and neither do the social engineers. All political parties are used to manip are used to manipulate the masses in various ways and nuggets of truth can and do emerge from any of them. Thinking along partisan lines is guaranteed to give you a distorted view. Ignore the imaginary lines between the parties. You may be certain that your you may be certain that your rulers do, or your perceived rulers do. Remain always aware of this simple dynamic. The people who become billionaires are generally the ones who are sociopathic enough to do whatever it takes to get ahead. This class has been able to buy up near total narrative control via media ownership slash influence corporate lobbying, think tank funding and campaign finance and are thus able to manipulate the public into consenting to agendas which benefit nobody but plutocrats and their lackeys. This explains pretty much every major problem that we are facing right now. Understand that nations are pure narrative constructs. They only exist to the extent that people agree to pretend that they do. The narrative managers know this, and they exploit the fact that most of us don't. Take Julian Assange, perfectly ex perfect example. He was pried out of the embassy and imprisoned by an extremely obvious collaboration between the US, UK, Sweden, Ecuador and Australia. Yet they each pretend, sorry, pretended that they were acting as separate sovereign nations completely independently of one another. Sweden pretended it was deeply concerned about rape allegations. The UK pretended it was deeply concerned about a bail violation. Ecuador pretended it was deeply concerned about skateboarding and embassy cat hygiene. The US pretended it was deeply concerned about the particulars of the way Assange helped Chelsea Manning cover her tracks. Australia pretended it was too deeply concerned about honouring the sovereign affairs of these other countries to intervene on behalf of its citizens. And it all converged in a way that just so happened to look exactly the same as imprisoning a journalist for publishing facts. You see the same dynamic constantly. Well, I don't think... I think that Julian Assange, I don't know if he were like, what they call it anyway, controlled opposition, I think. I think all of them, because they wouldn't have had all that mainstream media attention and, and, and be out there and everything else and be promoted and everything if they weren't. Anyone that's mainstream media that gets all that attention and everything else like that. Um, you see the same dynamic constantly 
whether it's with military interventions, trade deals or narrative shaping campaigns against non-aligned governments. Understand that war is the glue which holds the US centralised empire together. Without the carrot of military slash economic alliance and the stick of military slash economic violence, the US centralised empire would cease to exist. This is why war propaganda is constant and sometimes so forced that glaring plot holes become exposed. It's so important that they need to force it through, even if they can't get the narrative matrix around it constructed just right. If they seize manufacturing consent for the empire's relentless warmongering, people would lose all trust in government and media institutions, and those institutions would lose the ability to propagandise the public effectively. Without the ability to propagandise the public effectively, our perceived rulers cannot rule. Remember that when it comes to foreign policy, the neocons are always wrong. They have been so remarkably remarkably consistent in this for so long that whenever there is a question about any narrative involving hostilities between the US centralised power alliance and any other nation, you can just look at what Bill, Crystal, Max Boo and John Bolton are saying about it and believe the exact opposite. They are actually a very helpful navigation tool in this way. Notice how the manipulators like to split the population in two and then get them arguing over how they should serve the establishment. It's like this this thing, they're pushing the false dichotomy of the bad debates and stuff like that. Flat Earth versus Globe Earth and stuff like that. They're trying to split people in two again. One side versus the other. Yeah. Arguing over whether it's better to vote Democrat or Republican, or whether it's better to be to to what they call it, o- other things as well, yeah. Arguing over whether it's better to increase hostilities with Iran and Venezuela or with Syria and Russia, over whether you should support the U.S. president or the FBI. Arguing over how internet censorship should happen and whom should be censored rather than if censorship should happen in the first place. Well, no, of course it shouldn't happen to anybody. People should have the freedom of speech, the freedom of expression, the freedom of their opinions and stuff like that. And people should be allowed to put truths out there and, and, and show people how to find the truths and stuff like that, not be censored and stuff um, the longer they can keep us arguing over the best way to lick the imperial boot, the longer they keep us from talking about whether we want to lick it at all. Watch out for appeals to emotion. It's much easier to manipulate someone by appealing to their feely bits rather than their capacity for rational analysis. You get this a lot with these, with, with people as well online and that and all. Especially these Globers, like fight the flat earth. is appealing to people's emotions all the time. Which is why any time they want to manufacture support for military intervention interventionism, you see pictures of dead children on news screens everywhere rather than a logical argument for the advantages of using military violence based on the thorough presentation of facts and evidence. You see the same strategy used in the guilt trips they lay on third-party voters. It's all emotional hyperbole that crumbles under any fact-based analysis. But they use it because it works. They go after your heartstrings to circumvent your head. Pay attention to how much propaganda goes into maintaining the propaganda machine itself. This is, this is done... Because propaganda is just that is just that central to the maintenance of dominant power stru- perceived power structures. Much effort effort is spent building trust in establishment narrative management outlets, while sowing distrust in sources of dissent. And we we've seen this a lot in this subject, where they're putting all the stu- thing into building the um, trust in the establishment narrative management outlets and stuff yeah so you say oh well trust us and all this like you mean the earth's a globe and just us and all this all this shite yeah well they're so in distrust in people like myself and and other people like me yeah they're on the same sort of like journey as me and the path as me 
which when I saw distrust, distrusting us and stuff like that, people like myself. You'll see entire propaganda campaigns built around accomplishing solely this. And that's it. That's it for this one. I'll leave a link in the description um, to this. And it's quite interesting to have a look at and have a read. I'll have a listen to the videos and I'll just go and read it. Um, it's a good thing to read. I hope it helps. Thank you. Bye.